Hi everyone, have you ever seen realistic replicas of movie costumes? I wondered, how were they made? Well, the answer to that question is probably going to be 3D printing, since it's a very popular thing among hobbyists nowadays. Today, I'm going to talk about a breakthrough in 3D printing technology, which is called continuous liquid interface reduction. But before I do that, let's look at some common 3D printing methods. The first method is FDM printing, or fused deposition modeling. This method was developed in 1988 by Stephen Scott Crump, and became widely used for DIY and commercial applications after the original patent expired in 2009. In FDM printing, objects are printed by putting plastic down layer by layer. This, however, leads to several drawbacks. For instance, the printed item has a very rough surface, as you can see from the image on the left, and it may take a long time to complete a print. Another way of 3D printing is stereolithography, or SLA for short. In 1981, Japanese researcher Hideo Kodama developed the modern approach to stereolithography, where photosensitive polymers are cured layer by layer using a precisely controlled ultraviolet laser. This method was later commercialized in 1986. Due to the use of photosensitive polymers in combination with UV lasers, the layer height of SLA prints can be very thin, allowing for much smoother prints with minimal post-processing. However, this is done in the expense of print time. Moreover, the brittle nature of most photosensitive polymers mean that the prints may be mechanically weaker than the FDM prints. Nonetheless, this method has helped improve the prototyping process at the time. Now that you have an idea of what 3D printing used to be like and its advantages and disadvantages, I'd like to introduce you to continuous liquid interface production. Continuous liquid interface production, or CLIP for short, was first developed in 2014 and was originally owned by a company named EIPI Systems, but it is now being developed by Carbon Incorporated. According to the creators, the inspiration of the, of the development of CLIP is from the 1992 film Terminator 2 Judgment Day, where the character T-1000 reforms itself from a metallic pole. CLIP allows an object to be continuously printed from a pool of photosensitive resin by precisely manipulating the interaction of the resin with UV light and oxygen. This process is very similar to SLA prints, as they both use UV light to cure resin. However, in the clip process, it's, it is done continuously, resulting in the prints that are smooth and being, being done in a very short time compared to other methods. Clip also allowed for flexible and rubby objects to be printed, which was not possible previously. In a clip printer, the pull button is a window that is transparent to UV light, similar to how SLA is. An oxygen permeable membrane lies between the resin and the window to create a dead zone, which prevents the resin from attaching to the window by inhibiting the photopolymerization reaction. This is what separates it from SLA. This dead zone created by the oxygen permeable membrane allows uncured resin to float underneath the partially cured part of the object, and then being cured after it passes the dead zone when it's lifted above it. And this contributes to the overall smoothness and the remarkable speed of the clip process. In fact, the inventor claims that this method can be a hundred times faster than commercial 3D printing methods. Now, one may wonder, how does this oxygen permeable membrane create a dead zone? Well, unfortunately, carbon incorporated didn't really disclose the exact chemistry behind the process. But from a paper published in 2004, it describes the oxygen inhibition of photopolymerization, which is a process that's described in various advertisements used in carbon 3D um, uh, demonstrations. So, what exactly is this process? Well, to understand that, we should understand the actual reaction that's happening during 
the uh, curing process. This curing process is a polymerization in which the reaction propagates when a polymer radical chain reacts with a monomer. This polymer radical can also react with oxygen or another polymer, uh, another polymer radical, with the former causing the inhibition of the reaction and the latter terminating the reaction completely. This way, oxygen is able to inhibit the reaction and prevent resin from completely curing, thus creating the dead zone. Now, this brings me to my next point, which is the fact that the inhibition is generally considered as being undesirable, but also actually a very well-known process. Does this make the uh, fact that the inventors of CLIP were able to utilize this properly to improve its print speed and quality quite a remarkable fact, actually. Unfortunately, with the, such a such an improvement in print quality and speed comes the extremely high cost of using clip printers. For reference, SLA and FDM printers may start at around a few hundred US dollars, while a clip printer, which is currently only offered by Carbon Incorporated, starts at $25,000 US dollars a year. And this does not include the training and accessory costs. Of course, this is still a growing technology, so its difficulty to, of ac to access to the public is understandable. However, with the growing popularity of 3D printing, I believe that clip printers may become accessible to the general public very soon. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I hope you found it interesting. Thank you.